Uh, actually, na last year for the second Aquatech, I met uh, Sir Levi Manyala from American Soybean Association International Marketing, and we had a uh, opportunity na makasama siya para magtalk sa program natin last year. And then uh, last year, talagang mayo tina target na namin si. Uh, World Aquaculture Society to join us and then fortunately uh, we get connected with uh, Sir Lucas Manumaitis to Sir Levi Manyalak and we're very fortunate that uh, we were able to to convince them to help us with the program. Well my name is Lucas Manumaitis. I'm the president of the Asian Pacific chapter for the World Aquaculture Society. Uh, the World Aquaculture Society is the professional organization for people in the aquaculture industry. Uh, we represent both uh, people such as scientists, uh, industry people such as uh, suppliers, ingredient suppliers, uh, processors, and also and also farmers in the industry. And the the goal is to promote aquaculture culture in general throughout the world, but also with a very strong emphasis on the sustainability of the aquaculture culture industry. Right now, when we look at the different kinds of livestock industries that are in the world, think about poultry, think about swine, think about cattle, aquaculture is a livestock industry. A lot of people don't think of it that way, but it is. It's a, essentially a, basically a feedlot system. And what we want to do is we want to see that aquaculture, as it grows, that it grows responsibly and sustainably. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in, in, uh, in the past is some of the negative aspects of our culture, which we've seen, for example, with mangroves being cut down and uh, other things such as maybe bowling out here in the Philippines where you've had fish kills. But our culture actually can be developed very sustainably, just as other industry, livestock industries have as well. And so our goal in the Rock Society is to develop the professionalism and develop those systems and to bring people together in different ways to get that to get that message out. So for example, we have several publications we put on a regular basis. On a quarterly basis, we have the Journal of the World Aquaculture Society, which is where people can submit scientific articles for publication. We also have the World Aquaculture Magazine, which is not not as uh, scientifically based, shall we say, as a journal, but it's also a place for people to put in articles about the auction industry to bring attention to what they're doing in the field what topics are of interest currently and also looking into the future. Um, other things that the World Auction Society does is it works to bring together people through conferences and this happens on a, on a yearly basis through World Auction Culture meetings. Uh, this coming year it will be in Prague in the Czech Republic in September but also on a regional basis. As I mentioned, I'm the president of the Asian Pacific chapter so we also have a yearly conference. Last year it was in Kochi, India and this year, in May, uh, in May of this year, we're going to be having the Australasian Pacific uh, Australasian Conference in Melbourne, Australia. Obviously, we want to help promote promote uh, employment opportunities for people. Uh, we want to promote networking in the industry. And from our chapter perspective, we're also trying to develop people to come into the into the chapter chapter um, hierarchy to develop people to move into more positions of authority within the World Arts Society. So we've actually formed what we call country ambassador positions and an executive advisory council to, that works with the board of the Asian Pacific chapter to improve the chapter and identify things that are happening on a national and regional basis within the Asian Pacific region. We also are looking at developing smaller meetings. Conferences typically run from about 700 to 1,500 people but smaller meetings such as what we would call symposia. And symposia are to address a specific topic in a specific region that may not get the attention of a full conference, but are, is important nonetheless. And so we bring in different experts to come in and address a certain, a certain industry or a certain um, objective. The Asia Pacific chapter right now has approximately, I think, 370 members throughout the Asian Pacific region. And uh, we have just recently decided to merge with the Japan chapter. And the Japan chapter has around, let's say, about 40 or 50 members. So we're looking a little over 400 members within our, within our chapter. The, the overall World Arts Society has over 2,000 members. So you can see as a percentage, we're quite a large percentage of that 2,000. Um, one of the things that we would like to see, obviously, and we're hoping to, to highlight during this upcoming meeting for Aquatech, 
is that people who are in the aquaculture industry and who are professional aquaculture industry should be a member of WAS. And of course, be very thankful if they would join the APC as well. The, uh, the goal here is that by having people involved in, the, in, in, this, in this society and in the chapter, uh, it allows more communication about regional and national issues that are of importance. And that's something that we think is very important for Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific is the largest area for aquaculture. culture. When we look at aquaculture, culture, number one in the world is China by far, around 70% of the world's production. India is number two. And then we have, we have Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines is in, the, in, that, in that top 10. So obviously we have a lot of focus here on, on Philippines as well. Well, actually we were, we were approached by, by Jesse to come and uh, take part in this, which we happily agreed to do. Because the thing that the theme of the of the conference, you know, profitability with sustainability, is a very big importance to us as well. You know, as I mentioned, it wasn't so long ago that we saw people ripping up mangroves to put in shrimp ponds and doing things that were really unsustainable for the industry. And and yet the reason why they were doing that is because they're looking for short-term profit. And profit is very often the main driver for people to do anything. If you can't make a profit, then they're not, they're not, going, to, not going to produce. So how can we balance those two things? How can we balance having profitability yet sustainability? Now there's good examples in the world of how that's been done. Uh, the salmon industry in Norway and Scotland and in, in Canada and down in uh, Australia and New Zealand, they've been able to meet those challenges. Currently here in the Asian Pacific region, we're still trying to balance that. That's been a, a, a big problem for us in, in this region. Uh, you look at China, there's been a lot of cases where the, they've overused a, a common water resource, for example. So near shore areas that have cages, you could walk across a bay completely on cages. Uh, as I mentioned here in the Philippines, we've had the situations in Bolanao, uh, fish kills in Ta'al. All these things you know, don't mean that you should cancel aquaculture. Aquaculture is an important source of seafood. It's something that, that the future of seafood really is going to be aquaculture. As the world grows, there's more demand for seafood, it will not come from the wild. The wild, is, the wild capture of fish has reached a maximum limit and it's probably been overshot already, so it's going to reduce. So as the, as the industry grows, we're going to need to find ways to increase output but without destroying the very resources that we need to create that, create that output. So working, working with the industry, working with people such as with Aquatech uh, and organizations that, that, that come together like SeafDeck and WorldFish and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and those kind of organizations are really very important to us. I think that one of the things, particularly for the Philippines, a lot of people say the Philippines has a lot of potential. Uh, and uh, we're hoping, as always, to see that that potential is realized. Now, one of the things that, as, uh, as my work here, I've been, I've been living in Asia for over 10 years now and uh, based out of Bangkok, and, uh, but I traveled to the Philippines and I've been coming to the Philippines since 2002. There's a lot of potential here to develop industries that will be really competitive worldwide. But if the Philippines wants to break through the domestic production, production for domestic markets into export markets, there's a barrier there. You have to be able to reach certain size classes for the, the seafood products, such as fish and shrimp, and you also need to get a certain volume. And what we've seen oftentimes here in the Philippines is that people are, are rushing, to, rushing to get you know, fish to market and they hit a very, very nice domestic market, but then they overshoot. You have too much supply for too small a market, demand, demand doesn't, can't, can't uh, meet that supply, and then the industry collapses. We've seen that with tilapia, we've seen that with milkfish. So what we want to see, and what we hope things like Aquatic will do is that it'll allow people to start thinking about profitability and sustainability, but also how to develop their markets so they can be competitive worldwide. Because the world is going to be looking at the Philippines and saying, okay, we have now put in certain standards or certifications that we want to see in aquaculture. What is the Philippines doing to meet those, meet those things? At this point, I would say that most farmers are not ready for that kind of situation. And so, that's kind, of the, that's kind of one of the things we want to see happen through these kind of conferences. Um, maraming naitulong ang World Aquaculture Society sa Aquatech. Number one, ang kami po, uh, me as Jesse Magsino, the organizer, um, we're not really um, 
na, uh, hindi po kami yung nag-aaral tungkol sa aquaculture and yung mga technical knowledge um, yun po yung nakuha namin sa kanila they help us to to create the program and then to to come up with the proper yung mga topics natin for the team natin yung profitable aquaculture supporting sustainable practices well, I think that we have a very good program coming together for, the, for this conference. This is the third Aquatech. Um, as I, we talked about it with Jesse, the organizer, the, these Aquatech conferences are sort of progression, that you need to sort of look backwards and forwards. What did we talk about last year? What are we going to talk about in future years? At this period of time, you know, this idea of, of sustainability and profitability, I think, is very critical for the, for the Filipino aquaculture industry. And I think that a lot of the industry is realizing that they're going to have to pay a lot more focus to sustainability, and farmers are going to be asking, how can we still be profitable? Feed mills are going to ask, how can we still be profitable? The industry is going to be asking, you know, in terms of seafood, seafood markets, how can we be more profitable? Okay, so that's one of the things we hope to see. We hope to see that through the cooperation of international and domestic uh, players within this conference, that there'll be some discussions there be some consensus reached and some programs to move forward to see how we can make the aquaculture industry here in the Philippines sustainable yet profitable. Well, I'd like to invite you all to the third annual Aquatech, which is going to be happening in Angeles from uh, April 19th to the 20th, and I hope to see you all there. And, if I may say so, if you are not yet a member of the World Aquaculture Society Asia Pacific Chapter, I'd like to request you think about joining both, particularly if you're an aquaculture professional. Well, you can get in touch with me directly for the WASAPC email, which is apcwas at was.org. So it's apcwas at was.org.